Let's create an advanced item in Minecraft 117.1. Let's see what that means. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we are going to create a custom advanced item. So what I call advanced item is basically an item that has its own custom class. And for that, we're going to go into our item package, right click new package. And that is going to be the custom package. And inside of there, right click new Java class. And this is going to be the smart blowtorch item. So the idea is when you create a custom class for your item, you usually want to end it with, with the word item. That's sort of the idea. And this will extend the item class, making sure that this is the correct one, net Minecraft world item. And then you will get this error. You simply hover over this, create constructor matching super. And now everything is imported and you could already use this class in your mod items. However, of course, we want some special functionality here. And one of the things that a lot of people basically ask for is, hey, how can I use this, use an item and right click something and then something happens. So if I middle mouse button click on the item class here, you can see that I can actually see the entire item class and I can see all of the methods that I am able to basically overwrite. And there are a lot of things in your hurt enemy. So as you can see, this is the method that is basically called when you actually hurt an, another entity. There's some interaction with an entity. So interact living entity is basically like you use shears on a sheep. And there's a lot of other things here as well. It's definitely worth to take a look at this and just go through a little bit and just see some of the methods in there. And there's also the iForge item interface. So I can also middle mouse button click on this. And there are even more methods in here that you can also override and basically use for your own custom items. So this is really amazing. So Forge and even Minecraft give you a lot of opportunities to basically use things. And inside of your custom item class, what you can do is you can write start writing in override and then you can see basically all of the methods that you can you are able to override here we're going to override the use on method so this is the this one right here interaction result use on method with the use on context here and the idea is that this is called when you right click a block so this is any block if you have this item in your main hand then this is being called and what we're going to do is we're going to create it so that this smart blowtorch is basically able to right click a block and that will then turn into a particular item. So we're going to basically go through the entire process, how the idea sort of comes about, basically right click and what items are going to spawn from that. And the first thing that we're going to start with is basically asking whether or not we are on the client or the server. So this is one of the most important things. So we're going to write if and then we're going to say econtext.getLevel. And then we're going to call the isClientSide method right here. And if this is true, then we know that we are on the client. Therefore, we actually want to negate this with a exclamation point right here. And everything inside of this if statement now is going to be only executed on the server, which is actually exactly what we want here. And now we can make some variables basically here to make this a little bit nicer to read. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a level right here, which is going to be the level equal to pcontext.getLevel. Now it's very important when we actually import this, so alt and enter, making sure that this imports the correct level. This is net Minecraft world level level. So that's very important that this is the correct class here. Otherwise you might get an error. Then we also want the block pass. So this is the position that was clicked. So we're going to call this position clicked. And this is equal to pcontext.get clicked position or get click pass. And then we'll also get the block that was clicked. So this is a block and this is block clicked equals. And to get the actual block that was clicked, we actually have to use the level. So level.get block state at a particular position. Now this is of course the position that was clicked and then we'll say get block. So this gets the block and then of course we also need to import the block class. Once again, making sure that this is under the net Minecraft world level block block. So that's also very important. And this is now the actual block that was clicked. So now we can start to basically filter out what we actually want to. Now we can actually start to filter out, okay, which blocks are actually be able to be clicked here. And the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to save something in a map. Now, the idea here is that what we want to do is we want to save both the possible blocks that we are able to click and then also, and then also basically in tandem with that, the item that it's going to turn into. So at the very top of the class, we're going to create a private static final map, which is going to be of type block and of type item. 
And this is going to be the blow underscore torch underscore item underscore craft. This is just the way I called it. And this is equal to a new immutable map dot builder right here from actually com Google and so on and so forth. And this is also going to be, of course, of type block and of type item here. And the way to actually build this is you can basically then do a dot put here, right here. And there you can see I can then give a key, which is going to be a block, and then a value, which is going to be an item. So what I can do is I can, for example, say, hey, mod blocks dot titanium block dot get. And then for the item that should drop, we can, for example, say mod items dot titanium nugget dot get. And then at the very end, I also need to call dot build and end this with a semicolon. I will also make this a little bit nicer to read. And then we will also import the map. This is from Java U to map that class. And then as you can see, no more errors are to be found. If you want multiple things in your map here, you can chain those dot put as much as you want. So I can call this put again right here. So I could, for example, say something like put, and then I could say mod blocks, or I could say blocks, let's say blocks dot sand. Maybe it would drop something like blocks dot glass dot as item. And now if I were to, for example, click sand, then it would drop a glass block. And if I right click the titanium block with this blowtorch, then I will get a titanium ingot. So that's sort of the idea here of this map, basically. And now we can, of course, filter with this. I'm actually going to make a private method for this. So this is going to be a private boolean and blow torch. And this is going to take in a block or block. And it's simply going to return whether or not the blowtorch item here has a particular key. So it contains key. And then we're going to pass in the block here. And if that returns true, then we know that, hey, this block is inside of this map right here. And that will then enable us to basically continue with the functionality here. This is one of those things where some Java knowledge, of course, is once again, definitely not only preferable, but maybe even advised here, because it's simply something that you need to learn over time with the Java. So making something like this method here and making this map, that's just some Java knowledge. So I once again, of course, implore you to basically take a look at some Java stuff if you can. So for us to continue, we're simply going to say, hey, if can blowtorch the block clicked, then we will basically continue here. So we will go into this uh, if statement right here. There you go. And then the first thing that I want to do is I want to spawn the item that is specified here in this map. So the first thing I want to do is I want to say um, item entity, and I'm going to call this the entity item equals a new item entity. And I will have to pass in the world, first of all, that's fine through the level. Then I will have to pass in the actual uh, block position, uh, but I have to do this in doubles. So I will have to do position clicked dot get X, position clicked dot get Y, and then position clicked dot get Z or Z. And then the last thing is going to be a new item stack. So this is going to be a new item stack of blowtorch item craft dot get. And then we can pass in the block clicked. And then I'll just say one for the time being. Now, what is this? What is what is happening here? Well, we can get from this map if we pass in a particular block that is a key and we can get the item that we have put in with it. So a map basically maps something to something else. So this is a map which maps a particular block to a particular item. So if we pass in the block with the dot get method, then we get back the item that it's mapped to. So if we were to right click the titanium block, we would get back the ingot with this call. And if we were to right click sand, then we would get back glass. So that's the idea here. And the one here simply means that only one of those is going to drop. So of course, for the titanium block, that's not really worth it. But of course, also the entire item here is more or less just to show you the idea of it more than actually having it balanced, so to speak. If you wanted to balance it correctly, you would probably also add a basically an integer here as well so that you can specify how many of which particular item actually drop. So there's many things that you can do here. This is, of course, just one example. Right now, we also want to destroy the block. So I'm going to say level dot destroy a block. And I'm going to say position clicked. So at that position, and I'm going to say that I do not want the actual block to drop itself. Then I'm also going to basically spawn the entity. So the item itself. So it's going to be level dot add fresh entity, which we're going to use the entity item here. And that already works fine. And then I will also actually damage this item. So this is going to work in the following way. We're going to say p context dot get item in and dot hurt and break. And then we're going to say the amount. So this is just one. So we're going to damage this by one. 
we will say context.getPlayer. And then we're going to say P and then this arrow. And then we need curly brackets. And inside of here, we need to call P dot broadcast break event with the particular hand actually. So this is P context dot get hand. So I'm going to quickly explain what is going on here. This is some crazy stuff, of course. So we're going to get the item that the current player is basically holding in its hand. So this is, of course, the item that we've right clicked with. And we're going to say, hey, hurt and break this by the amount one. So we're going to damage this item by one. And if the actual item should break, then we will cast this, you know, broadcast break event right here with this hand so that an, a particular animation can play. That's basically the idea here. And that's all that we really need to do. And there's some other thing that we will do, and that is going to be an else statement here. So if we can't actually blowtorch the block that is being passed in, then what we're going to do is we're going to call the context dot get player dot send message. So we're actually going to send a particular message here. In our case, we're just going to use a text component for the time being. We're just going to say cannot blowtorch the this block. And then here we also need the util dot nil uuid pass in as a second parameter for the send message and then this is going to be sent basically to the actual player that has used this blowtorch here and then what is incredibly important we actually have to return the interaction result dot success otherwise it will actually not work properly i've tried this i've actually this has been an issue for quite a while i've actually try to work this out for about an hour or so until I finally figure out that we actually need to return a success here and then everything will work fine. So now the smart blowtorch item class is completely done. Now this is quite the method, you know, the use on method and it can be a little bit intimidating here. Most of this is some basic Java really with basically some Minecraft knowledge mixed in. So I can very much only urge you to think about maybe starting a you know a java series somewhere or taking a look at some tutorials there i genuinely think that it's a smart idea because in this case once again this is some fairly straightforward stuff most of this is yeah right and then for some other methods just so that i have shown you some of them so there's also something like on using tick so this is called every tick when you have the item in your hand something like that you can also get some other things like can equip. So basically, if you can actually equip this item in a particular armor slot. And as you can see, there are a bunch of other things as well. So there's so many things. Use, for example, is the item where you just right click, not on a particular block, but sort of in the air. As you can see, there are a whole bunch of other things in here as well. Uh, I can just tell you, try out a few things, try out a few methods, take a look at the item class and the forge item class to just basically get an idea of what you can do and just be happy to experiment a little bit. Right, the next thing we need to do, which is very important in our mod items class, we of course now need to add the actual item. So we're going to copy over the raw titanium here and we're going to say that this is the smart underscore blow underscore torch and right here as well, smart underscore blow underscore torch and instead of a new item this is now a new smart blowtorch item and that's pretty much all that we need to do in order to create this advanced item class this is very important if you don't do this then of course it's not going to work so this makes it so that we create a new smart blowtorch item instance instead of just creating a new item right because we have created a new item of course we also need an item model but this is a just a normal item more or less. So we can just copy this over and we'll call this the smart underscore blow underscore torch right here. And then here we'll simply go to the smart underscore blow underscore torch. So this is the texture that is going to point to. And I'm going to quickly copy over the texture as well. Smart blow torch right here. So there it is. And then last but not least, let's also add it to the en underscore us JSON file. This is the smart underscore blow underscore torch. And then this is going to be the smart blow torch. There you go. And now after everything here has been added, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft once more and let's see. So first of all, the blow torch has been successfully added to the game. It has a texture. And now the question is, does the functionality work? So if I right click the titanium block, 
you can see that there it is we get a titanium nugget here and if i were to right click the sand then we actually do get a glass block here as well so this is really good and it also does updates so it basically updates the block above it so it should fall down there you go so that was one issue that i had before and if i right click a block that does not work so that i don't have in my map then you can see you cannot blowtorch this block so we do the right click animation but it doesn't work and I can also go into survival mode. And for the time being, this is actually not damaged quite yet because we need to add one more thing so that it is damaged. But that is actually something that is very easy to do. So let's see how to do that. Right, we found ourselves back in the mod items class and to actually add the durability here we simply need to in the item properties do dot durability and then just pass in an integer for the max damage or the durability that we want so let's for example say i want this to be used 64 times and now this will just work it will immediately get the classic bar at the bottom of the item that you know from for example a sword or any other tool as well and that's basically all that you really need to do. And this would already be it for the advanced item tutorial. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.